Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently we're looking at region 3296 and 3297 who had a beautiful interaction last night or just a few hours ago actually. Uh, the event began at 3296 and extended into 32 or 3297 rather and extended into 3296 where there's an interconnection between 3296 and both 3293 which is in front of it and 3297 which is the one to the south and right behind it oh my there. <laughs> I have myself on the uh, big TV as well so I can see it a little bit clear uh, the activity we're looking at is a dual chronomass ejection once again in this case it's a little bit different though we have a prominence that's been dancing on the edge for a while that has finally erupted and we can see that on the rim here as it extends and says bye bye and then we have the chronomass ejection that occurred actually at 3297 but extended to flaring activity where we got the M2.11 uh, 2 from 3296 so a, a beautiful extension of activity. I believe the peak of the flare at 3297 with the corner mass ejection was just under M class. I believe it was a C97, C.97. And uh, yeah, this is on uh, 193, but we also have a beautiful look of this on 304. So looking at Angstrom's 304, we can see the prominence that's dispersing here a little bit more clearly. And this is SDO on 8K imagery. So uh, you can zoom in, still keep a lot of that detail. And there's that prominence going. And you can see, just after the prominence goes, the eruption and ICME from 3297. beautiful event overall and we also have a close-up look of this activity on 3290 or on um, of these 1397 and 1396 on 171 angstroms and here we are and Beautiful, beautiful. So once again, this is a, uh, we had a solar flare this morning, an M2.11 that began with a high C class, almost an M class over 3297, extended to the M class on 3296. We had a chronomass ejection that occurred off the rim that was a prominence, and we had a chronomass ejection that came from 3297 that is going eastward. However, there is a slight chance that this activity will be a uh, glancing impact for Earth. I uh, don't see too much of an uh, influx of activity based upon that. However, keep in mind we do have that smaller ICME that will be impacting us just prior to this event. So if it is a glancing blow, we will likely see slightly escalated geomagnetic activity based upon that, but there's a chance this will miss us entirely. So it's, it's right on that, uh, that cusp. But uh, what I find very beautiful about this is looking at 3296, which has interconnected with both regions on either side of it, hanging out with its neighbors. You can see that restructuring and reconfiguration, those loops, absolutely beautiful organization involved in that, despite the fact that the region is completely intermingled with the other two. It provides just such a, a beautiful overlay of those loops. I like to call it the stitching post an event because what happens is the, uh, the event leaves somewhat like a scar where there's a lot of connectivity that's no longer connecting uh, as it was and there's a reconfiguration that's ongoing to reconnect those positives and negatives so that it's a continual energy transferring through those magnetic field lines which go all the way from the north to south pole now twisting 
thus leading to this solar maximum that we are approaching, which is expected to be reached approximately July of 2025. So we will be seeing an escalation of activity, you know, little ups and downs, a roller coaster of events as we progress towards that time. And we're still seeing that escalation up to this point where we're getting these lovely events here. And that's about it. So uh, beautiful ICMEs, interplanetary chronomass ejections that have occurred. Uh, of that, only one does appear to be a glancing uh, chance of a glancing impact towards Earth. And of that, that's the far lesser, once again, of the two ICMEs that we see occurring. And that said, cheers and science on.